Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna talk about how much it costs to build a custom home. All right, like I said today, everybody, we're gonna talk about how much it costs to build a custom home. Full disclosure, this is not a video that I wanted to do, but we have a lot of people ask about it. Why did I not wanna do this video? Because there are a ton of variables, and undoubtedly, somebody's gonna make a comment or somebody's gonna give us a phone call or a text to say something bad that they disagree with based on what I'm about to say. But remember, I'm gonna caveat this all. Tons of variables, and yeah, there's just a lot of variables. That's all I can say. But I wanna give some people that maybe haven't really thought much about the custom home process, maybe you haven't investigated it that much, what ballpark, what are we talking about here? What is this whole thing gonna cost me? What's realistic? So what I wanna talk about is gonna be specific to, it's really specific to what we do and we're in the Colorado area. So we're based in Colorado Springs, but all over the state of Colorado. So those are kind of the numbers that we're gonna talk through. Like I said, I can't preface it enough. Too many variables to give real specific numbers, but I wanna give a range to give people an idea and then some just general thoughts that go into the pricing. All right, so when we talk about variables, there's a lot we're talking about. We're talking about level of finishes, the location, the specific lot that you're on, the design style that you want, and a whole lot of other things. There's a big difference between if you want a, a modern mountain lodge with just tons of real timber and exposed beams and walls of glass, that's gonna be a whole lot different price point than if you want a 3,500 square foot stucco two-story home that just has some custom finishes for you specifically. Vastly, vastly different. But let's talk about typical build price. And this is just what we see with our clients and we've seen over the last year or so. And there are some changes we're seeing right now as well, which we'll talk about. But typically, because everybody always asks price per square foot. So as we're sitting there and we're kind of noodling out in our head what we want our house to look like, we're trying to think, okay, what's a number I can put to this based on how big it is? And I will tell you, this is a, this is a trap that I personally got stuck in myself when my wife and I built of getting too attached to the price per square foot number and kind of overlooked a few things that we wish we would have done different because we were so stuck on the price per square foot. So use it as a measuring stick, but don't let it be the only stick that you use to measure. There you go. So Colorado Front Range build price, $250 a square foot on the very low end, as low as you can really get, to $350 a foot. Now you can certainly go much higher than that. We've had builds, you know, probably $700 a foot. So that 250 to 350, that's just a good range to think about for a basic custom home in a neighborhood. Now that price that we're talking about, that does not include the land. That's just the price to build the house. 250 to 350 a foot, don't if finished, unfinished, just that's, so if you had a finished basement, you're probably gonna be a little bit more than 250 a foot. If you decided to uh, leave the basement unfinished, you might be a little bit lower. But that 250 to 350 a foot, that's a good just rule of thumb, and I know it's a wide range, but it's just a general rule to think about. So an example to put with that, a 4,000 square foot ranch home, very common here in the area that we build. So you have 2,000 square feet on the main level roughly, 2,000 square foot on the lower level, and you've got a, a two or maybe a three car garage, nothing crazy on the outside, just you know a nice quality custom home. It's gonna, those numbers are gonna put you around like the 1.2 before land. So you're probably close to 1.4, 1.5 after you buy, you know, maybe a two and a half acre lot. Again, these are really rough numbers, but I think people, a lot of times people have the misconception that building a custom home could potentially be cheaper than buying a resale home. And nine times out of 10, I would say that's probably not the case. Every now and then it can be, and it kind of depends on just what your specific situation is, depending on what type of resale home you were gonna buy and what that price point was like. Um, but typically building custom to get it the way that you want it is going to be, it's really hard to, in our area to get underneath the seven figures anymore right now. Um, so 250 to 350 a foot is a pretty good range to think about. Like I said, it can be much, much more than that, but it, you're, it's going to be near impossible to get below 250 a foot right now in our area. And that's what just about any builder out there, even ones that maybe aren't quite as high quality as other builders. Um, so let's just think about how can we how can we maybe get that price down a little bit or can we or can we get more bang for our buck? One thing that as we talk about why this is so expensive, let's kind of talk about that real quick. There's a few different things that go into it, but we've got to remember there's design cost involved. So 
you know, if it's a true custom home, you kind of sketched it out maybe on a bar napkin and took it to the builder and they had their architect look at it and kind of make up some rough sketches of it and then you settled out on everything and you had to go back and forth, you know, five or six or 10 times to kind of get that design exactly how you wanted before you actually got buildable blueprints at the end of the day, buildable plans. That whole design process comes at a cost. So it's not as if you're just pulling a piece of paper off the shelf with a production builder and saying, I want house A. This house is designed for you, so there's extra design and architect cost and engineering costs associated with that. Um, another thing that goes into it is quality, honestly. There are production builders or builders that build, you know, you may have heard the term like track homes is kind of something that you hear you hear of fairly commonly, but we say production builders, so builders that are just building, you know, a lot of homes. They're not custom, they're not designed for any specific person. They're just stock plans that they have that they build in a community, typically have maybe five to 10 plans they build. Those, some of those builders build great homes and a lot of them don't. A lot of them are building so fast that the quality honestly just isn't there. The quality of a custom home should, in my opinion, always be better than the quality in a production home. And if your custom home builder isn't at a higher level of quality, in my opinion, you might want to kind of think about what builder you're going to go to work with, what builder you're going to choose to work with rather. So it's everything from just you know, framing, drywall, fit and finish of trim, millwork, doors, all that stuff. There's a big difference between, you know, white painted trim with a whole bunch of caulking in it and stained grade trim where you can't even tell it's two separate pieces of wood. So the quality that you see in a custom home should ultimately, in my opinion, be much higher than you see in a production home, but that comes at a cost as well. Um, material labor is the other big thing. Labor kind of goes back in, and material labor, I guess, both kind of go back into the quality piece of it. Um, quality trades that do quality work and using materials that are going to last a long time so that you're not going to have problems a year down the road with, you know, whatever, what are gaps opening up in your trim or a door that doesn't shut anymore, whatever it might be. Or you go to, you know, you're measuring out a wall to hang a picture and you realize that the wall is actually not square. It's actually out of plumb, like an inch or something. So everything from the foundation guys to the framers, drywall guys, trim work guys, plumbers, electrician, everything in a custom home typically is a little bit a little bit higher level of quality and that does drive up the labor cost typically a little bit and custom home builders they're not giving a contract to one trade to build 500 houses it's one at a time so they're their guy that they use for you know the houses as they get them so the labor is typically a little bit better quality and therefore a little bit higher cost materials that are put into a custom home are typically higher priced higher quality materials so those again add into the price and then a big factor of it too is that whenever you build a custom home, typically you're either going to be uh, selecting the piece of land yourself, which is probably going to be quite a bit more expensive than just a you know 6,000 square foot lot inside a subdivision. Or even if it is a subdivision that the custom homes are built in, they're typically on larger lots, you know, at least an acre plus. In our area, typically it's two and a half acres or more is what we see most custom homes built on. So that's just another big driving factor of the overall price of custom home building is the land. So the design, the quality, material, craftsmanship, and then the land, those are just items that really push the price up some on a custom home. So to go back to my point of how can we how can we help that? Can we, is there anything we can do about it? One thing that you can certainly do is a lot of builders will have stock plans. So these aren't plans that they build, you know, 50 houses a year of by any means, but Maybe it's they have four or five, like we have a handful of plans that we've had our architect design up and we have really good numbers associated with those plans. We've made some efficiencies to get the price down a little bit. And because it's custom, we're a true custom builder, you can certainly adjust those plans to your needs, but starting with a stock plan and then making some changes to it, oftentimes will be quite a bit less expensive than starting from scratch and having to go through the whole design process. So if the builder has a few plans that they have designed in the past, or maybe they've built in the past, or maybe they just have on file of, hey, we haven't built this yet, but all the design work is done. We can make some tweaks to it if you want to. Oftentimes those builder plans can save you some money because you're saving design cost. And sometimes they go a little bit faster because maybe their trades have already built that house or one very similar to it. So they kind of know what the process is going to look like. Now, again, these are with most builders, certainly with us, these are true custom homes. So you can change anything you want to on it. You can add to the house, add an RV garage, you know, make the basement all finished versus half finished. You can add a big patio on the back, whatever it is, you can make the plans different. You can change the exterior styling to accomplish the look that you want, but the floor plan is still the same. So there's a lot of things you can do with builder plans that might save you some money. Um, so 
I just want to go back to the that overall price range I talked about and really just kind of drive this point home that that price range, we mentioned that 250 to 350, it's not going to be, it can be a lot higher, like I said, but it's not really going to be any lower than that. We just haven't been able to find, we haven't been able to find, um, I guess, just really after material increases and just the housing market has been on kind of such of a boom, even I think, even as things have slowed down, material prices have come down some, but just as an example, even if material, like framing material, even if it was half of what it was, and it actually has come down probably close to that much, but even as material for framing has come way down, on a million dollar house, you might be saving $30,000, which is a big chunk of change, don't get me wrong, it might give you a lot of things to do in another area, but it's not like you're taking $200,000 off the overall build cost of the house. And builders in our area, I know the word this way, is the profit margins haven't really changed as the cost of material and labor and land have went up over the last few years. And really that's why the cost of custom has gotten more expensive lately. So like I said, there's a lot of variables. I at least wanted to give everybody a ballpark number of what it is here in Colorado. It's probably gonna be a little bit different in your area, but I know with talking with other builders across the country, a lot of people are around that 250 to 300, 350 a square foot for a true custom home. So hopefully that was helpful. Like I said, I, there's a, so many variables, I don't wanna get down the rabbit hole too much with it. But what I would like to do is offer up that if you have any questions about the price of building custom, reach out, call, text, email, hit us up in the comments, whatever is easiest for you. Just wanna make sure you get all the information that you could possibly need to kind of help you get down this path if you're thinking about it. And like I mentioned, we are here in the Colorado area, so would love the opportunity if you're here in Colorado, maybe thinking about a build, love the opportunity to chat with you, see if we might be a fit for you. And as always, if this information is good for you, please take the time, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get all the notifications. We're trying to push out new content every week just to help you guys out as much as we can. We'll talk soon.